Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So I Dr. Tanya Bose, I will be talking about the properties of Fourier transform today. So in particular, we will talk about the linearity and the shifting properties in this video. So to begin with, let us see what is the linearity properties. So the linearity property says that whenever we have two functions fx and gx and there are two constants say a and b then the linearity property states that if you apply the Fourier transform on a composite function that is a fx plus b gx then you can easily split the Fourier transform the constant can be taken out you can take the Fourier transform of fx plus you can take the second constant b out and Fourier transform of gx now, why we are able to uh, uh, split these functions? Because you have seen in my previous videos that Fourier transform is basically an integration, right? And we know that that integration, it is very compatible with the composite functions. You can split the integrals into small functions and then you can integrate it. So the same principle we can apply in the linearity property also, right? So again, the linearity property can also be applied to Fourier cosine transform and Fourier sine transform also. So whenever there is a composite function, if you find that there are too many functions in your, uh, it is given in it. So you can always break down instead of calculating the integral of the entire composite function, we can break it into small functions and then we can calculate the cosine transform, sine transform or simply the Fourier transform, right? So this is the linearity property. <clears throat> the next property is the shifting property. So what happens in the shifting property? If the Fourier transform of any function fx is 1 upon under root 2 pi integration minus infinity to infinity f of x into e to the power minus iota alpha x dx. So by now you will be familiar with this formula, the mathematical tool Fourier transform to calculate for any function fx. Then whenever we are shifting fx to f of x minus a. So here you can see that the scale has been shifted. Yeah, the variable x has been shifted to x minus a. Then what is the change in your answer? Whatever is the Fourier transform for the function fx, that will come as it is. And you will multiply a factor that is e to the power minus iota alpha a. So this factor will get multiplied according to the shifting that is given to you in the question. Right? So now, based on this, let us see what type of questions we can get on shifting property. So here you can see that the question says that find the Fourier transform of fx equal to sine x in the interval 0 less than x less than pi and 0 otherwise. And then you need to evaluate the Fourier transform of f of x minus 2. Now in this case, uh, do check my videos on Fourier transform. You will find that we have already calculated the Fourier transform of this function fx in the interval 0 to pi and when it is 0 otherwise, right? So I'm not repeating the Fourier transform part. So when you calculate the Fourier transform, you'll get your Fourier transform by this function. That is 1 upon under root 2 pi e to the power minus iota alpha pi plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha square. Right. So do watch my video on Fourier transform for this question. Right. And now you can see that the question is to calculate the Fourier transform of the function f of x minus 2. So in this case, what is done, the shifting is done from x to x minus 2, right? So if you identify your a, you can compare your function f of x minus 2 with f of x minus a. So your a becomes 2. So in that case, whatever is your Fourier transform, we will write it as it is. That is 1 by under root 2 pi e to the power minus iota alpha pi plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha square. So this we will write as it is and we will multiply the factor e to the power minus iota a alpha. So a is 2 and we will multiply along with 2 alpha. Right? So if the question is to calculate Fourier transform of the function f of x plus 4 in that case. So in that case you will multiply the factor e to the power now your a will be minus 4, so this minus will get converted to a plus sign and you have to multiply iota 4 alpha along with the Fourier transform. So you will get e to the power minus iota alpha pi plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha square. So this is how we calculate the questions on shifting property, right? 
So I hope the shifting property is clear to everyone, right? So thank you for watching the video and do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video. Believe in yourself, you can do everything, right? And have a nice day.